Good afternoon and welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Neil Clark, District Extension Forestry Agent for Southeast Virginia. Today we'll be talking about digital mapping and GPS for forest landowners. To help us with that, we have a special guest, uh, Mark Books with Landmark Spatial Solutions. Mark is a certified forester with over 25 years experience in research and forest management. His current focus is on assisting foresters and natural resource managers with geospatial technology. And today he's gonna to extend that to us a little bit uh, on a landowner level. Mark has been an executive volunteer as president and co-founder of the ESRI uh, or ESRI Forestry Group since 2008. Uh, he currently resides in Fredericksburg, Virginia and Mark received his bachelor's and master's degrees in forestry uh, with the emphasis in uh, GIS and remote sensing from Michigan Tech University. So Mark, um, what are some reasons that a landowner um, would wanna utilize digital mapping? Well, Neil, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. And to the landowners, I would say, digital uh, mapping is just a tool to help you in communication. And so why is that important? Well, as my granddad used to say, you know, good fences make good neighbors. I'm like, all right, I got that granddad. And so one way, at the very minimum, is to know where your property's at, right? And whether you have a fence or at least a well-marked boundary, I think that's important communication to yourself and to your family or friends to stay within your property or and or also be in agreement with where your neighbors as to where the property boundaries are at. I think a couple other places are with digital mapping and things like that is um, so with the use of some of the historical imagery that's available, we can go back in time and get just a, myriad of information about what happened on that land in the past, what were the past land uses or the past land cover. And that may give you some insights to what you have now and what you might want to do in the future. I think it's also important about whether you actively or passively manage your land. It's good to have just a, a good map and either communicate to yourself or to whomever you want to communicate to, like, hey, here's my hunt stand. Here is here is my food plot. Here is my house. Please don't shoot. <laughs> and, and, and forbid that you would need it, but you might need to call for help. And it might be a good idea to have landmarks to be able to, in a well-established map so people can find you. How would a landowner then be able to um, either collect or, or view this data uh, maybe in two parts, maybe part at home and part in the field? Sure. Well, let's take a look at some of the tools that are available. And for this conversation, let's just talk about what's freely available or avail available at a very low cost. And so starting with a person's desktop, I think there's a, you know, everyone uses Google Maps. I think that's a, a great place to start, right? Esri has something very similar called ArcGIS Earth. You can do a little bit more mapping on that. And when, and also, an app called Avenza PDF Map. Kind of all that then too does lend itself to the phone. When we're using our phone in the field, realize if we don't have cellular coverage, some of the supporting data services might not come through, but the phone's GPS should be able to point your location on the map, but the background information may not show. And so from this conversation, I would say, suggest people Use what's available at low or free costs. And then if need be, if you have a case for it, then maybe invest in a good GPS uh, because that location, the data derived from with that device will be of a higher quality. But again, if you need that, maybe the phone isn't quite as accurate, but it puts you on the map and you know the air associated with that. So you can kind of work with that. And then as you're mapping, accuracies in requirements increase, then maybe upgrade to a dedicated GPS receiver. Well, once they have this data, um, what are some, um, some uh, tools or applications that will allow them to, to view that or do some analysis uh, with that? If we're trying to make a map, let's suppose we're in an office, we have our laptop or our desktop. So going back to, Google Maps is one way. Also, the county GIS websites will also yield a lot of good information, oftentimes including your parcel data, and then have some imagery, some soils data, so on and so forth. 
Oftentimes you can export that as a PDF. So that's something to work with. But if you're wanting to do more of the mapping yourselves, then think about something like perhaps Avenza PDF maps. And then also really the ArcGIS Earth allows people to, folks to uh, do some really nice map making. And then one step further with, um, with the Esri is their web GIS called ArcGIS Online. So you can have a public account, but at either free or low cost, one can engage in online web mapping, if you will, web GIS. This here is a Venza Maps. Pretty neat thing because you can go from your desktop and then work offline. The US Forest Service provides a lot of coordinates embedded uh, PDFs for their maps of the national forest. And I think, of course, everyone here knows you know, Google Maps. This is just a quick example of what a county GIS might be able to offer, you know, in terms of your plat data. This is the personal use one that we talked about, right? Or someone who really got into mapping and wanted to invest a little bit of money into this. And so for $100 a year, but it opens up a lot of the, the functionality, uh, ArcGIS Online, which would then allow folks to use the web apps or the mobile apps, so such as field maps. And this can be taken, and as long as you prepare it ahead of time, can be taken in an offline environment. And then this is a free uh, viewer, if you will, and you can do some, some mapping with this. This is ArcGIS Earth. You can open up KMLs, visualize in 3D, use that same credentials to be able to log in, and then all your data automatically just shows up once you're both in a connected environment, right? I'm out here today in the Big Woods Wildlife Management Area and also Big Woods State Forest over here, Wildlife Management over here, State Forest, uh, to look at Avenza maps and some offline uh, mapping uh, software uh, that you can use when you're not in the office and out of range of cell towers. I'm Okay, you see the blue dot is my location. And so, I'm looking out my window and you see the intersection there, uh, Line Pine Road, Ellis Path, etc. We will start to drive forward and you will see the motion occur on the map real time. In just a second I will go back to the map so you can see that it is tracking as I drive on Avenza maps. So the, the big blue uh, broad dot is showing the GPS not very accurate and then as that goes away GPS accuracy hones in. And as you can see my dot driving down the road and then I will shift over to another app, Google Earth. And as soon as I hit the location button, you'll see us driving down the road again in that app. And then as we approach the clearing, I will look at clearing. There it is on Earth. And then we will go to look at it in Google Earth. We will look at it on Avenza Maps. Uh, of course, that's a map, so you don't have it definitive. And on Field Maps, also have to hit the Location button and select the layers that I want. So I change the base map to Imagery. Then hit location. That was the previous location. Here we are. And as you can see the red line on there, it lets you annotate a layer over top of the map uh, with the freehand drawing. And then I selected uh, topographic maps. Another thing we normally want to do is calculate area or length to distance. You can do this in 
Google Maps or Google Earth uh, on the phone. You just set a point and when you do that its measurement icon comes up allows you to continue add points so if you have a visual thing that you can see from the imagery you can just click around the perimeter it gives you the running distance walking distance so as you go around this field edge, get to there. When you go back to the beginning, it will allow you to join the area. That will give you the area in square feet. And if you want to convert that, you can change the units. Uh, let's get acres, 27.8 acres. And it takes about one mile of walking distance to go around it. Avenza Maps will also allow you to attach a photo to a point location. So you can take your photo and it will associate it with that point. Likewise, you can see out of tower location how the data is already on the phone from previous but not uploading. Tracking would be another feature that's needed. So you can turn on the tracking and as you can see driving down the road in Avenza Maps the GPS tracks and that is even without any cell towers and this is the drive back using Google Earth and you can see it real time and this is with previous data not streaming so um, Mark where are some places that we can go to find uh, data and different data sources so I think there's a few that come to mind one is uh, your county GIS website Two, in Virginia, we have uh, Virginia Ge Geographic Information Network. That's a great source of it for information. I think your consulting forester should be able to help you with some of your mapping needs. Vigen has a Virginia, because I did, they have a Virginia Department of Forestry geospatial data portal. Ag and Forestal Districts, Gypsy Moth Defoliation, um, Legacy Areas, Dry Hydrants. Another additional source would be the Eros uh, Data Center. They have a rich content of to topographic maps, imagery, both aerial imagery and satellite imagery, LIDAR. Just it's worth exploring. Gotcha. So you mentioned LIDAR. So explain to us uh, what, what LIDAR data is. Sure, sure. So LIDAR is light detection and ranging. It's an, what's considered an active remote sensing system. And so in this context, a laser beam goes out from its sensor to an object and it comes back. So then we can know the, the difference between the top of the tree and the ground. Foresters like to know what, how tall our trees are. So we can take those signals from the tops of the trees and then subtract out the earth. And then that, the remainder then gives us our tree heights. USGS has the three depth program. Okay. And, and you know, if you look at you know, most of the continental U.S. is being flown for LIDAR. Mark, thank you so much for sharing so many great, uh, great tools and, and things that we can have as, as, uh, as forest landowners uh, that will help us, you know, in a myriad of, of ways from finding out where we are to communicating that to other people uh, to even doing a, a more in-depth analysis. So very useful. And thank you for your time. Well, thanks for having us. Please know that we highly recommend reaching out to Extension to our friends that are landowners and also to their uh, consulting foresters. But we're happy to help in any way we can otherwise. Thank you for joining us for another 15 minutes in the forest. Make sure you join us at 1215 on October the 7th, where Adam Downing will be giving us a silvopoultry update.